so welcome to today's lecture on dc machines and the lecture will be on motor characteristic so we have uh, discussed the generator characteristic now we are going to discuss the motor characteristic so if you remember the generator characteristic we have discussed the internal characteristic and external characteristic of the uh, dc generator as well as the load characteristic so here in motor characteristic we define it into three different types first characteristic that we define is torque versus armature current and this is known as the electrical characteristic because both torque and armature current if you see these are generated because of the electrical parameters that is the voltage okay second characteristic we have that is the speed versus armature current and the third characteristic that we will be seeing is speed versus torque and this is the mechanical characteristic because the speed is involved which is rotating so speed versus torque is the mechanical characteristic so three characteristic we are going to see in terms of the motor these three characteristic can be easily obtained provided you just remember the two equations that is torque is proportional to flux and armature current torque is proportional to the product of flux and armature current and this flux will be determined for the machine for which you are trying to obtain the characteristic whether it is a shunt machine or whether it is a series machine now speed is proportional to the ratio of the back emf and the flux so these two particular equations are very important to understand the motor characteristic which we are going to learn now that is the torque versus armature current speed versus armature current and speed versus torque so let us first concentrate our uh, discussion on series motor so we will discuss the first characteristic on series motor and the relationship is torque is proportional to flux and armature current and you know that in series motor your flux and armature current are proportional to each other because the reason being is that you have the motor and here your series field winding is connected in series with the armature so the armature current is the one which is flowing across the field and uh, since the field current is proportional to the flux or the flux is proportional to the field current so we can write that the flux is proportional to the armature current so here we put it the armature current in this relationship so we'll get torque is proportional to square of the armature current so for a series motor the first fundamental equation that we got is torque that is the armature torque is proportional to the square of the armature current now if you have the square of the armature current obviously it is quadratic in nature then your shape of the curve before magnetic saturation so when the saturation take place before that you will have torque proportional to square of the armature current which is parabola in nature so the shape of the curve will be parabolic in nature first point second point is once the magnetic saturation is reached then your square term will vanish and you will be having the torque proportional to armature current that is you will be having a straight line so if you see the characteristic of torque versus armature current then you can see that the armature torque curve is basically a parabola so this is your parabola curve which you are getting so torque is proportional to the square of the armature curve so this is a uh, Uh, before the magnetic saturation so once the saturation has reached you will be getting a straight line now if you compare the armature torque and the shaft torque you know that shaft torque is the one which is actually available uh, at the output of the machine so shaft torque will always be less than the armature torque due to the stray losses so there will be some amount of losses and hence the shaft torque will be less than the armature torque so armature torque will be more than the shaft torque armature torque means the torque which is produced in the machine armature of the machine and the shaft which is connected uh, with the armature so here whatever the torque is available that is known as the shaft torque now motors are used 
where high starting torque is required. So we have discussed the application of the DC motor and we know that in the series motor is used for high torque application because the torque is proportional to square of the armature current. So a small amount of armature current will produce a heavy, heavy amount of the torque. So at the starting where we required a bigger torque or higher torque, there we are use we will prefer series motor because the torque is proportional to square of the armature current. Now what happened if the load is small? So uh, when you are doing any practical on series motor, one precaution is told that the series motor has to be operated, uh, do not need to be operated at no load condition, rather a small amount of load has to be there in the series motor. So why that precaution is required? So that discussion we are going to do now. So suppose uh, in the series motor, this is the series motor where the field winding is connected in series with armature. The load that is connected at the shaft, if it is less, means small amount of load is connected, then what will happen? You know that motor uh, due to the back EMF condition, the motor is adjusting the armature current. So the armature current will be less under the condition the load is small. So here your back EMF will be small and neglected. So under the light load condition or the small load condition, the armature current drawn by the motor or the armature is less and hence the back EMF is very, very small and it can be neglected because the reason being is that the speed is proportional to back EMF and flux which we have seen and in this case we can see that speed and flux are inversely proportional to each other and flux is basically depending upon the armature current. So if armature current is less, if armature current is less, obviously you know that uh, the speed will be uh, less uh, high because speed and armature current are inversely proportional to each other. Now, if the armature current is very, very less, means under the no load condition where the armature current is very, very less, so what will happen? The speed will be tremendously high. So we prefer, we make a precaution that don't start the series motor under the no mechanical load condition. So this is the precaution that we are taking in the lab for performing any experiment on the series motor that we do not start a series motor under the no load condition. Now, uh, you know the relationship between speed and torque that when speed increases, torque decreases. So the, uh, the uh, curve between the speed and armature current and the speed and torque will be similar to in the nature, it will be falling. So it will be decaying curve for both speed armature current relationship and speed torque relationship we can easily see from the equations. So just you have to remember for the characteristic of the series motor that the torque is proportional to the square of the armature current. So it is a parabolic in nature and due to this characteristic uh, the motor is used for high uh, torque application, high starting torque application. And uh, uh, if you see the, we should not start the series motor under no load condition and the speed armature current curve and speed torque graph is decreasing in nature. Next discussion we will be doing for the shunt motor. Okay, you are obviously knowing that the shunt motor is a constant flux motor. So shunt motor is basically a constant flux motor. So what happened at heavy load condition? So at heavy load condition, there is a slight decrease in the flux. So when load, because the flux is obviously constant uh, for a shunt motor. Now, when you are putting a heavy load on the machine, then there will be a slight drop in the flux due to the armature reaction. Whereas there is no changes in the armature current, but where there is a change in the armature reaction. So there is a small fall in the uh, flux. Now torque armature current relationship. So when you are drawing a curve between torque and armature current, then you will be getting a straight line. Then you will be getting a straight line for the armature torque. And again, the shaft torque will be a little bit less from the armature torque due to the stray losses. But here you will be getting a straight line. So that is the reason the shunt motor are basically used where you require a constant speed and a constant torque application. 
so constant torque means suddenly increase with the torque for the armature current so heavy starting load now when you are putting a heavy starting load then what is happening you required a starting current is very very high and sunt motor never we started on the heavy load condition now this is the second precaution that we are going to discuss on sunt motor we have discussed for a series motor that in a series motor you will not start the series motor under no load condition and in the sunt motor you should not start the sunt motor under heavy load condition because under the heavy load condition what will happen the starting torque starting current will be quite high in nature okay so you should not start under the heavy load condition now uh, the relationship between the speed and the armature current and speed and torque that we are going to see so you know that your relationship speed is proportional to back emf and flux whereas the flux is constant in nature for a sunt motor so speed is proportional to the back emf so speed is proportional to back emf and speed will be constant as back emf is constant for a sunt motor so if you see the speed curve so with respect to the armature current this is very very constant but there is a slight drop here due to the armature reaction so this drop is due to the armature reaction there is a slight drop under the heavy load condition so we have discussed this point now with load what is happening the back emf falls slightly more than the flux and speed is slightly decreased so sunt motor is a constant speed motor or constant flux motor because the speed is practically remaining constant only under the heavy load condition there is a slight drop due to the armature reaction so even if you can see the speed torque graph so in most all the cases you will see that speed armature current uh, characteristic speed torque characteristic for a series motor and the sunt motor will be same in nature therefore sunt motors are constant speed motors so in such type of applications where we require constant speed we prefer to use sunt motor series motors are used where high starting torque applications are required now we will discuss for the compound motor so compound motor you know that it is the uh, summation or the sum of the uh, series motor uh, series flux and the sunt flux so there will be series flux plus minus sunt flux so uh, when it is additive in nature it is known as the cumulative compound motor so for the adding you will be having cumulative compound motors and when the flux is having a subtractive nature then it is known as the differentially compound motor so we have discussed that differential compound motors are not used in practice only the cumulative compound motors are used in practice because there is a heavy decrease in the speed for the increase in the armature current so this we have already discussed for dc sunt generate dc generators so same applications will be there for dc motor as well so let us see for a cumulative compound motor so in a cumulative compound motor if you see that it develops a large torque at low speed just like a series motor because compound motors will be having a characteristic combination of both the series motor and the sunt motor so it will be developing a large torque at low speed just like a series motor so if you see the uh, relationship between the torque and the armature current for a compound motor then for a cumulative compound motor you will you, have, you will be seeing that the curve is similar to a series motor where you are getting a parabolic in nature so no disadvantage of series motor at light load or no load condition so the precaution that we are taking for series motor that it should not be started at light load or no load condition that disadvantage is not there in compound motor so we can start we can start the compound motor at no load condition so here the series flux will help the sunt flux to increase the total amount of the flux hence runs at a reasonable speed because in series motor you are having only the series flux but in compound motor you have both the series flux and sunt flux so both are adding up in such a way that under the no load condition your motor runs at a reasonable amount of the speed
So here you can see that the cumulative compound motor characteristic for the speed armature current graph for the speed torque graph for a cumulative compound is similar in nature to the series motor. So here you can see that uh, sorry it's similar to nature in the sand graph. So here there will be a slight decrease from the constant. So if you compare the sand motor with respect to cumulative motor then the cumulative motor characteristic will be little fall from the sunt motor. So here also if you compare the speed torque curve for the sunt motor and the cumulative motor there will be a small fall. So this is all about the cumulative compound motors. So we can see that cumulative uh, compound motors are taking the advantage of both the series motor and the sunt motor. So the precautions that we usually take for the sunt motor and series motor we not to take for the cumulative motor because sunt and series flux will help each other. Now the differentially compound motor if you take so two fluxes will be opposing each other. So sunt flux and series flux will oppose each other and the resultant flux will decrease as the load increases. So with the increase in the load if you can see that the flux will be very very decreasing in nature and machine runs at a higher speed with increase in the load. So machine will be running at a higher speed with increase in the load. So here you can see the differentially compound motor speed is increasing for the increase in the load because load increase armature current will increase. Then it try to run with dangerously high speed at full load condition. So as we increase the load then what happened the speed is keep on increasing and it will dangerous, dangerously run at a very high speed. So generally it is not used in practice. So we don't use this differentially compound motors. We prefer to use cumulative compound motors because it is using the advantage of both the sunt motor and the series motor. So uh, seeing the characteristic you can compare both the sunt and the series motor characteristic for the uh, the different type of characteristic as well as the cumulative compound motor. So these are the uh, three type of characteristic that we have studied speed current characteristic, speed torque characteristic and torque load current characteristic for the three different type of motors we will be seeing one is sunt motor, other is series motor and cumulative compound motors for the different conditions. So wherever you are uh, requiring a high starting torque condition, we prefer series motor. Where you require constant speed operation or constant flux operation, we prefer sunt motors. And in certain type of applications where we require the advantage of both the sunt and series motor, we prefer to go with cumulative compound motor. So in this way, we have discussed the characteristic of both the uh, sunt and the series uh, motor for different type of characteristic.